Hello, my name is Harshil Agrawal and I am an Auth0 ambassador. In this video, I am going to talk about Auth0 actions and help you with connecting your Stripe account to Auth0. A user will sign up to your app, they will be automatically added to Stripe as a customer. Now to get started, you will need to create a tenant in your Auth0 account. I have already set up a mine for this video. You'll also need a Stripe account, so go ahead and sign up on Stripe. And lastly, we are going to use a low code automation tool called Anit10 to connect the Auth0 actions with Stripe. Being a low code enthusiast, I love to create projects with minimal line of codes. So this is my Auth0 dashboard. And on the sidebar over here, you can see Auth0 Actions. The Auth0 Actions has two parts, the flows and the libraries. A library is basically a collection of actions. The first thing we want to do is build a custom action and then we'll add it to the flow. So we are going to click on build custom. Give this a name of call edit and webhook. Now we want to run this when a user registration is complete and we can leave the runtime to node 16 well this is the recommended runtime now the wonderful thing i like about all zero actions is that you can import npm modules so let's go ahead and add axios and we are gonna use the latest version now that we have Axios installed, we can go ahead and add it in our project. I'm going to define another constant which is going to be the webhook URL that we are going to call. We're going to get that URL in just a second. We'll make a request to that URL. Now this is going to be a post request and we want to send in the data of the user. Now that we have the setup and the actions, let's go ahead in an attend and get the webhook URL. I have an attend running locally on my machine, and because I wanted to use webhooks, I started an attend with a tunnel. Now I'm gonna add the webhook node, and in here, I'm gonna change the method to post. For stronger security, you might want to add uh, some kind of authentication to this webhook. So it can be a basic auth or a header auth. Now you can pass on the header uh, or the basic auth information with your Axios request. For the purpose of this video, I am gonna just skip that part. The other thing is we can customize this part. So let's just call this sign up and then Everything else looks good. Currently, because we are trying to test it and we are building it out, I'm gonna use the test URL, copy it, save this workflow so that the webhook gets registered in an attend. And I'm gonna come back to all zero actions and paste in my URL. Now that I have everything in place, I can go ahead and test this from within the actions. But before doing that, let's execute our workflow. And now we are going to run this and you can already see we have a payload data in here with this sample data that all zero uses for the test. It looks like the test result was a success. Let's check it on any time. So if I switch to the JSON view over here in the body, we have all the information that we need. This looks good. Uh, for the time being, let's just go ahead and deploy this. I'm going to click on deploy, which is going to deploy our action. Now that our action is deployed, I'm going to go ahead to flows. Go to post user registration. And in here, I can drag and drop the flow. You can have multiple actions and you can decide the order in which you want to run that. Let's apply this and go ahead and test it out in the real use case scenario. 
I'm gonna go to get started and over here there is this beautiful option that allows me to try out the function. I'm gonna go to try out. I'm gonna sign up the user and I'm gonna again execute this workflow. I have to run it every time because I'm in the test environment and not on the production environment right now. So let's just call this hey at the test.com and give this a wonderful password. If I come back to any time, we see that we have this information now coming in. So that's fantastic. We got the data of the user when they registered in any time. Now the next step is to move this data to Stripe. Now there are a couple of steps that you can add in between some kind of functional logic that you want. So for example, you want to add the user to Stripe only when their email is verified. So you can add an if note, which would check if the email is verified or not, and add that user to Stripe. There are a lot of options that we can do, but let us just go ahead and right now add the user to Stripe. Now for Stripe, I have a test account already created. I have enabled the test mode and I am using that. I don't want to use it in my production environment for Stripe. And right now, in the customers, you can see that we don't have any customers. I'll come back to an attempt, select the customer resource, click on create, and in the name field, because we don't have a name for the customer yet, I am just gonna simply use the email address that we got from our geo. Similarly, I am gonna add a metadata which is going to be auth0 id. This will help me identify the user if I want, if I ever want to check it against my auth0 database. So this is the user id. And then the email address. If I execute this node, We'll get a success message from Stripe with all the information. You can see that our customer is now logged into Stripe. And if we go to our Stripe dashboard and refresh the page, we would see our customer information in Stripe. So this was a quick overview of all zero actions and how you can quickly connect all zero actions with a lot of other APIs out there with Anit and IO. If you want to learn more about the Auth0 action, I suggest you take a look at the Auth0 actions documentation. It has tons of examples to help you get started.